Hi Kerry, I'm introducing Kerry today and Kerry is an artist, illustrator and does a lot of graphic design. He's quite famous for his brand which is Mr Blob and so we're going to be asking you some questions today Kerry about you know how you got into art and things like that. So what, what inspired you to become an artist in the beginning? It was mainly because I was you know I was at the time it was like I was skateboarding and listening to punk I guess and I had a mate Ben who I love dearly, he's my best mate, but he was one of these guys who like, he used to try things and get good at them really quick. So he tried BMX in and he got good at it really quick and he tried skateboarding and he got good at it really quick. I wasn't like that. It took me a long time to want to, to get good at stuff. And I'd always drawn graphics, I'd always drawn logos. And if you take it right back, you've got to, you know, it's, it's me playing with Lego and watching Thunderbirds and, um, and Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles back in the 90s, the old car cartoon. So that mixture of stuff and then finding out, you know, and, and at the time, like the music that was big, it was like, you know, punk and the whole thing around that. And yeah, I was just trying to find something like, I could get, basically get good at. Um, yeah, okay. And I went to Switzerland on my first holiday abroad and I just saw it out there, which is quite weird because I didn't see it in Wales at all, not that much. And then I saw it out there and I was just like, what is this? And nobody was doing it back home. Like nobody really knew what it was. I didn't have a clue what it was. And I remember the first time I went out and I copied um, a piece off a computer because I didn't know what to do. I didn't, I, mean, I didn't know you could have your own style and, you know, have your own letters and, you know, 20, what are we, 2020, like 20 years. <laughs> I've had those photos and I've no name. And um, so, yeah, uh, that's that's where it came from, I think, wanting to do something different. Yeah. Oh, quite, quite eclectic because you've got, you know, you've got, you've got the music, uh, the, punk, the punk and obviously that quality in there. You've got the graphic design qualities and they're very unique. Your images are very unique. They're a little personalities in their own right and quite distinct so how do you actually create your images what sort of materials do you use and how do you create the images um i always start with a drawing um sometimes i'll do stuff um like everything starts with a pencil but then gradually i moved on to ink and now if i'm honest <laughs> only in the last year or two i've started having like um my drawings in the sketchbook, like I always drew, I drew like it was all always drew, but like it's only in the last, I don't know, last year or two that I've really like had the sketchbook because I always did it on loose paper. So I was never, I always wanted to get my drawing spot on with like fine liners and different thickness of fine liners and things. And now I've progressed onto what's called pro markers, which I can't stop buying. I love them. I haven't really, I've only used them for about a year. Um, but to me, if to me, if I can't draw something, I can't paint it. So that discipline of drawing and drawing and drawing, even if even when I first got into graffiti, most of the stuff I did was draw. I would just even if it was just copying letters, because I don't know, like I said before, I didn't have a clue. So that discipline of drawing, of getting your stuff absolutely spot on, I think is such it's it's like a foundation if you're building a house. You start with the foundation. You don't start with the ensuite. Mm. You start. You drop with your foundations. Um, and if you haven't, if you haven't got that, then you can't progress. And I, and I was just like, all right, okay, I've got to get my drawing spot on. Mm. I can relate to that as an artist because if you don't sort of get the grounding down, then you yeah. really, the whole thing goes off whack, and you haven't got the creation you had, if you like, in your mind's eye. I'm assuming that you you actually imagine a, a number of these uh, qualities of your, if you like, your graphics as we've got in front of us with your your T-shirt. But do yeah. you sort of imagine them in your mind and then sort of create them from there? Yeah. Um. I, if I'm honest, like. What progressed my style was seeing the design for the iPod photo, um, which came out, oh my God, I can't even remember, a year ago, it must have been so long. But if you imagine the old iPod photo with the click wheel and the screen, once I saw that and I was just like, oh my gosh, I love the design of it. And 
it was just seeing how simple that was with a screen and a, and a wheel. And it was that and the culmination of seeing, you know, record sleeves as well. And I loved, I've always loved Transformers and Gundam robots from Japan. And uh, so it was just putting those images together and making characters out of them. Because um, I was always drawn to characters more than the letters. Like, I love letters and letters is, you know, the basis of graffiti is where it came from. It came yeah. from tagging letters. So your name, your name are letters. But then I was always drawn more to characters. And... Yeah, just, and you know, like I said before, like Thunderbird, Stingray, Captain Scarlet, I had all those Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Thundercats, um, and, Trans- and Transformers. Just like, Once I saw them, I was just like, you know, the whole thing of Optimus Prime being aesthetically like a hero, with the yeah. shape, the body, you know, yeah. he's a very kind of um, strong leader, but yeah. it's not mental thing uh, it's the physical the way he was designed like I mean you could just fall into a car and it was just like wow you know <laughs> yeah, it's, um, yeah. Uh, and like the Japanese are mad on robots because like yeah I love I love Japanese anime I can relate to that I love it I absolutely love it yeah I can I, I, yeah, yeah. Um, the whole Studio Ghibli stuff is insane yeah, um, yeah. exactly Hayao Miyazaki is just I don't know what it's he brilliant. is brilliant yeah um, but yeah, um, so I wanted, and I was looking, and because I'd gone to Europe, I wasn't drawn to British style, I was drawn to yeah. Euro styles, so they would do that very differently. Yeah, um, yeah, their style, they look at stuff from like Germany and Amsterdam and France and Italy, and their styles are a lot different from the New York kind of mm. uh, style then, if you like. Yes. Looking at it from a graph design side. Yes. And art side rather than, well, this is graffiti, you know, because if you look at London style, it was just like emitting New York. Um, but Europe wasn't like that. So, yeah, I was. You no, style. I can understand that because I remember watching, um, I was watching uh, Master Photography, and on there they had, they were doing street, street photography, but they had a beautiful, amazing um, uh, illustrative, if you like, uh, street art on the walls, amazing graphic stuff, and it was awesome. And it was almost making the culture of uh, the feeling of the place. So obviously you've done um, wall art, if you like, and what we know to be spray painting and that sort of yeah. thing on walls. And you've been actually asked to contribute to various projects as well. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because, um, you know, people love to know where art gets to and how it, it sort of progresses. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a mixture of... Um, I just love going to different spots. That's really interesting, you know, finding different spots. And um, I love going to abandoned buildings and... You know, it's just the adventure of it and leaving your mark. And as well as being, I think the best, one of the coolest jobs I've ever worked for was probably, I think it was one in the townhouse of Swansea Marina for a guy who used to be a backing singer for Kylie Minogue. Mm. He did, we did, well, I did, uh, Kylie Minogue themed wall in his bedroom, which was all red. And at the time, Kylie Minogue had released artwork that was just street art based you know it was just like you couldn't it was just couldn't be more perfect I was looking at it sleeves you we were looking at the sleeves and I was like oh my gosh yeah that's a tag like her K and it was just like a tag so that was really cool being able to work on that um working with SOC has always been good uh, producers there and they've been amazing um uh seeing you know, seeing my stuff on uh, New Year's Eve on the segment on SOC, that was always good. Um, working with Urban Outfitters, that was really cool. Doing a job in Bath. Um, and I've done like various salons. Uh, there's one guy, Jamie Hill, he's done Swansea Marina. I've done a lot of stuff in Swansea Marina. He's, he's a good friend. So because he cuts hair and we like ex- pretty much exactly the same things, it's just a breeze to work with him. So I worked with his salon the first time and then he had an extension and I redid the salon again and I remember one night he called me down and he said oh um do you want to do a pillar and I was just like yeah okay literally 
got in, they locked me in. <laughs> he locked me in, I had music on, and I just did the pillar in like two hours, and then went to Brew Dog and had a drink with him, him and his missus. So I was really, uh, yeah, so really quick stuff, really big stuff. Uh, I've, I've actually, I've been locked in another salon in Beauty Salon in Swansea as well, actually. They literally just locked me in, um, which is good because they can trust you. Um, yeah, brilliant. So yeah, it's um, working on projects. So what sort of things did you do for the salon? What sort of designs did they actually ask you to do some of these businesses? Um, uh, with Jamie, he loved, well, I did his logo, obviously, um, and he wanted roses, which he loved, his girlfriend loved, I hated. I really didn't like those roses, but he liked them, so as long as the client's happy, that's good. Um, and then he just wanted, it was really cool with Jamie, because he wanted like layers of just simple things, looking mm. like in the middle of a city or something just simple it wasn't anything complicated just simple um uh yeah um so and i did that twice then over like the, the first period and the second period when he opened his his extension the building next door um what else did i do i did a really long corridor for the arctic club in swansea that took forever it was really good because um, mm. I would like a DJ character and a character with a drink and sunglasses. Oh, lovely! Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's 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 been re it's really good being able to work. Uh, people, you know, people see stuff and think, "Oh, yeah, you know, you can do that, and I can do my style rather than oh, we want to look like this." And uh, my latest one during lockdown has been my mum's downstairs loo. Um, she wanted a picture to look in, like it's in the Alps, so I did mountains and a fence. And trees and a little forest and one of that going you know in the sky and thing i did the ceiling which was a nightmare because it stunk of paint for ages and it was, i had to literally scrub the floor because there was so much dust um yeah not if you're spraying inside put something on the floor dust sheet um yeah so and with and working with urban outfitters that was just really cool um with that I did like a few canvases, yes. uh, two canvases in their store in Bath, and they had two of my characters in the store in Amsterdam, uh, which I couldn't do out in Amsterdam, unfortunately. But um, it was still really cool to have them there, you know. Uh, so yeah, yeah, really cool. So stuff. you're quite an you're quite an established artist. You've been on TV. Yeah. You've worked um, with various businesses. You've got your own brand, which we'll get to in a minute. Yeah. And you know you've you've gotten quite a lot of, of exposure. I know you were working with a, this charity that you mentioned to me before, and you would, they're quite interesting because they're into into their projects with human trafficking and various other things. I was looking at that earlier. Um, oh, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about that project? Because that that was quite quite exciting. I was quite I was quite into that. Yeah, cause... It's cool because Mikey, he's the UK director, I think, for A Twenty One. They're just amazing. They're just Oh, they blow my mind what they do. They stop human trafficking on all levels throughout the UK and internationally. They've got bases in different cities. And the lady who run, who heads it, she's like the director of the whole thing, Christine Kane. She, she was abused when she was young. And, they, it, it, you know, we hear her speak and it's just like, she always says, you know, I had two ways. I could have come up with this worse. I could have come up with it better. And she's one of the people... She's just come up for it for the better. And, mm. and I was just like, right, I'm going to set them an anti slavery charity. And it's just, blown, it's just blown up over the years. It's just amazing. And she believes in her heart that she's going to um, end slavery for good. Like, there's no, like, oh, maybe, oh, yeah, we might do it. And no, she believes it, which is a bit. Brilliant. Brilliant. How does it? I don't know. But. I met Mikey in my church about last year. Yes. Talked a lot about it. Didn't think anything of it. He then he added, I sent him a request on Instagram, completely forgot about it. Then yeah, did me out of the blue. And I was like, who's this? Oh, yeah, Mikey. Okay. I messaged him. Did respect the reply. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I remember you. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay, cool. And I was like, oh, can I do anything? Again, not thinking anything would happen. And he was just like, yeah, can you do a painting or artwork for us? And people can sponsor you. And he was like, oh, yeah, cool. 
Um, and yeah, I just that's how we started. There wasn't anything for big rubber <laughs> metal. So yeah, that was it. I love it. I think that you, your passion shows and, and that you've got such a distinct style in art. You sort of found your voice, your, your statement, if you like. I think when an artist starts off, that's something that's got to be there. Um, and I think a lot of artists miss that point, as in they've got to have a distinction. And I know this went on to your branding of your clothing, that you have your own clothing brand and that you've done some modeling and clothing around you. you you're actually showing, you're showcasing your, your brand, if you like. Tell us a little bit more about your brand and how that came to be, and obviously a little bit about your modelling, perhaps, and, and how it's established. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just I've always been into fashion, uh, um, ever since uh, for a few years. I think that's where it, a good few years ago, that's where it took off, and then I got into trainers and that whole streetwear scene, I guess. And then at the time, I was just like a few, and yeah, it was there a few years, but I was on Star Now, and then I saw the thing for. At the time, it was what was it called? Rule the runway up in Birmingham. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, Elements of control now. Um, mm-hmm. Those guys, Natty, the lady who runs it, is amazing. And then I had the chance of being a designer for that. So we did a show two, three, four years ago um, with them, the Elements one. Um, and that just like, that was just amazing. Being able to dress proper models and do a show and, you know, speak about it and choose my music and choose who I wanted to wear my clothes and, you know, creating the clothes from screen printed t-shirts to hand sewn patches onto jackets. And so, yeah, I think I took just my love of fashion and just fused the two really and fused art and fashion. They've always gone together. If you, you know, you look at any designer now, you mm. know, from the Queen and Jeremy Scott and, um, and two of my biggest influences, um, even to the couture stuff, like, you know, Dior, and uh, it's just, I just wanted to fuse that with art, and I loved, because I like punk as well, the whole punky jacket thing of putting patches yeah. on your jackets, and I wanted to do something like that, but with my art, and I was just I, like, I've, oh, always, I've always loved that. Just, Exactly. When you see somebody like when Xander uh, Rose started out and, and they, were, they were established in a style which obviously was then influenced a lot around punk and then she individualised that, that tech, those colours and, uh, and the rich yeah. fabrics and the ideas behind that. I think as an artist you've got so many ways to push your creativity and it's, it's an amazing thing but I, I actually think people have lost touch perhaps with the ability to be, have their own expression to perhaps have yeah. a way of doing that you know because i my question to you would be well if you had all you know young artists and youth people what would be your advice to get started as an artist how would you get them out there and say what would you do honestly first yeah. thing yes. sketch pencil honestly that's how i started mm. it's, i would research i draw like there's no tomorrow like drawing is so fundamental because if you can't draw, trust me, it'll come out in your work. It won't show as good. But if you've got your foundation solid, it'll come out in your work. And, and just put the hours in. Mm. I think it's hard to know in this generation. People want things instantly. We want everything instantly. Instant food, instant coffee, instant you know, Netflix. And you know, we go, oh, wait like five seconds for the next episode to come on. And if you don't put the work in, then it's not going to come out in your stuff. Um, yeah. If you gave foundations right, put the hours in, do your research, you know, watch films, read books, talk to people. You know, I like going on Instagram because to me, it's like a daily kick up the bum because you look at some people's stuff and it's just, oh, God. That's so true. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, you, you can, but you can take that in two ways. You can say that, either see that as a positive. It's like, right, I'm going to really like, work hard to get myself looking good or oh, take it as negative or oh, he's so much better than me what's the point I might as well just quit and um you know and then and I saw I saw a documentary earlier actually with um the other day with um it was called abstract on Netflix and we were speaking to Tinker Hatfield mm. and he started who designed pretty much all the Nike shoes he started the Air Max and mm. you know that came out of an injury you know, he started doing that because he got, he 
broke his ankle or his leg doing pole vaulting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was just like can't do it anymore. And he was like, oh well, I can draw because he's got a deg- he had a degree in architecture, and he was like, you did few sets for Nike, and then you did, like he did design for a shoe, and like Phil Nike was like, right, <laughs> you're going to be a shoe designer for Nike. There's no like if so, but you are, and then you, yeah, the rest is really history. So don't as well i'd say don't take disappointment too hard you will get it um but i'm not saying that to put you up and saying that you know make it wanting you to spur you on to work harder and get your stuff looking good and you know i've always asked you how do you paint like that and how do you do this well i didn't do it straight away nobody starts off straight away unless you're like michelangelo or something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know uh, um and even then, you had to, you, he, I bet you had to hone his craft. And you've always got to hone your craft. You've always got to, you know, work in your stuff and develop your style. And, you know, and don't worry at the start if you get it wrong. Don't worry at the start if you've got to copy. Everyone starts off copying, especially in graffiti. We call it biting. So everyone's got to bite the style. You know, even now, it's, I think it's easier to copy. Back then, it was a bit more. And when it started in the 80s, a bit more militant, you couldn't really copy because there weren't many artists around. Now there's so many artists. You know, Picasso said, uh, great artists copy. Um, no, good artists copy, great artists steal. That's so, right. yeah, don't, don't worry too much about getting your stuff wrong or but draw, 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 draw. I can't stress that enough. I mean, it's true, that. because you're using great examples there, because, you know, when you're using people's established style, like, like Picasso and and almost the estrangement of the imagery that, that is there, it's so evocative because you're drawn into it. It's like people do this, they do, they copy, because obviously we were talking about, you know, I teach, uh, teach art. When people learn things like this, they learn very much, oh, I want to copy like you, I want to do what you do, I want to, and you're thinking, well... You know that's not your style you've got to break outside but as you said unless you practice and it, you find that that place that your expression if you like wants yeah. to come through and yeah. through your taste to your your to your senses of what you've brought in yeah i love that as a very positive message because i think that perhaps people don't have enough creative time but hopefully they have now since we've been in oh no, no, yeah 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 absolutely yeah. I'm hoping, yeah. I'm hoping, yeah, because, yeah. you know, that expression has to come out. And I think there's an element of it being a carthesis and it was a healing thing. When you get drawing or painting or whatever your, your creative expression mm. is, you sort of push it out there. I mean, would you would you think that was a, the uh, the case that people need to sort of get some of their, some emotions out onto, onto their work or? Yeah. I mean, people do it in songs, so why not in, on, on paper, you know? Mm. Um, it's, I was out spinning just now. I was literally on every window was a rainbow. Every single window I was yes. passing, rainbow, rainbow, <laughs> rainbow, rainbow. And it's just, well, someone's actually created that. If it's just kids with pens or finger painting or, or, mm-hmm. or whatever, felt a pen, whatever, you know, someone's obviously sat down and actually done that. And it's great to see. And this is why I try and teach the kids when I'm working with them. Yeah. You make the yeah. kids in like in, you know, in privileged uh communities. Um so they haven't had a start in life that every other kid has, especially the, when you work with neats, you know, and they haven't got employment or whatever. And you try I try and tell them, Oh well I can't do it. Like, yes, you can. I was in your shoes. In fact, I was you know, I didn't start as young as you did. I didn't have the opportunities as you had your age, you know, I didn't um, I had to wait till I was 16, you know. Um, so this is why I try and tell the kids, you know, get what do you want to do. I can do my own stuff in my own time. What do you want to do for this five, six, seven hours I'm here today? What do you want to do? What do you want to, oh, well, I want to cough. You know, it's like, great, okay. You know, well, I, I don't know what to do. I can't do it. It's like, yes, you can do it. You can do it. You just need to take that first initial step and then, their way, you know. So you're working with youth and, and you're helping them to find their creative if expressions and things like that. Tell us just a little bit more about that because I know you do quite a lot of work helping within the community and I think community is a big 
part of this message about um, what we call unsung heroes, people who are doing things within the community and helping people to find their way or their expression or whatever their thing is, that's part of the message. So what do you do with it, with the youth um, in so general? Was, yeah. yeah, so I was asked up by a lady called Eleanor who runs a project called People Speak Up in Slatty. Now, she used to be, her background is in drama teaching. Mm. Bet said this, I didn't have a clue this was even happening. I had no idea. Um, it all happened because I did some work for the Furnace Theatre and she was, her office was adjacent to the theatre. So she obviously saw my work for that. Because um, I, I did some animations, me and my mate did some animations for the theatre and it was on screen. So uh, I'm showing outside in Clancy. Um, over Christmas, over about Christmas a few years back, and then obviously she'd seen all that stuff, and then she, her friend Rufus Rufasa, who does like spoken word, because that's Eleanor's background is spoken word, mm -hmm. and she did some street art incorporating there. Rufus mentioned me. I went to see her, and then it all grew from there. And then we ran a project last year called People Speak Up in Slash, and we took an old derelict building that's that was a supposed to be knocked down, it's still there, which is <laughs> the, the good, one good thing about the virus is lockdown. It hasn't been knocked down yet, the app is still up. Um, so we took kids, they did our workshops through a week or two weeks over half term. Oh no, in the summer holidays, sorry. So we they did woodwork, they did sand modeling, which was insane, it was so big. And they did street art, which was my thing. So we took the kids, we sat down with them and said, right, what do you want to do? What do you think of Fnetti? What comes to mind with you? Rufus is just a wizard with words. So she sat down with them, came up with some poems and words and, you know, letters and stuff to what to talk about what they thought of Fnetti. And then, you know, I just, they, like, I didn't even help them with the drawing. They just sat down with a massive piece of paper pens, whatever, and they just did all the drawing, all the prep work, and I was just there to help. But, you know, I didn't want to give them ideas because it was their ideas that was meant to come um, across in the project. So then we took over this building, it was about 20 foot, and yeah, just let loose with a load of cans, and, you know, we did, so we called it Lately Voices, and we incorporated the images that they'd come up with of walking around the town and seeing the market and you know where they live and where they okay. their friends live or their yeah. family you know um so yeah and then we did an exhibition in the furnace theater in july june july last year so yeah that was really cool and we had the mayor then the griffith was there the minister and um it, it was so rewarding because they were so shy in the prep work. Once they got to the wall, that was it. It was like, oh, can I do this? Can I do that? There's like 20 kids and only me. And I was, <laughs> it was like, no. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one of me has only got one pair of hands. Um, so, yeah, it was just great to see kids. It's reaching out to that. I think the big message here with you, um, Kerry, is that the, 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 you're prolific. In other words, you produce so much work that people get to see it they know about it they want to then connect with it i think that you know as a as an artist of any description as we, we've touched on, on on spoken word on music and um, obviously art is it bespokely um either sketching painting you know um graffiti art and everything else we we're talking about something that people need to keep doing until it's 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 out and all over the place and people get to know about them and produce work as you say not necessarily get zoned into something that's um perhaps served up or something that they don't um perhaps create in their own selves i think this message is a really powerful message you know um i think that artists are usually quite insular and, and like to have their own space so a lot of times they don't speak up or, or talk um and when i get the opportunity to have a, a conversation with somebody who's producing good work very positive messages, um, showing people what can be done, particularly when they're young, um, and giving these sorts of messages. It's, it's an amazingly inspirational thing. And, and even now I'm talking to you, I'm getting quite like, oh, this is, in, this is inspiring stuff, it's great. Um, so, you know, obviously you've got ambitions and you want to take things to, to other levels. And what are your next 
what are your next projects? What are your ambitions? Where would you like to sort of take your, if you like, artwork and obviously your branding as well? Where are you going to be taking this? Um, so obviously we're on, we're on lockdown now. So I've got like a million hours in the day, which is great. So I've been teaching myself how to paint better with a brush. Mm. Um, it's really cool doing that charity project with the canvases, giving me a bit of a kick to, oh yeah, I can actually do this and it's made me want to, it's given me that hunger to want to do it and get better. And I think um, having that hunger is really important, you know. So I remember seeing an interview with a hunger, with a, with a rapper, sorry. And he was back in New York and, and he talked about the hunger, the hunger that to want to get good and to want to make yourself known. So I think for me, it's like that. I've got that hunger to want to paint better with a brush, to have that discipline. So I've been painting with a can for like 16 years now. And I want that. I feel I want to, I want to learn more with that. So that's one thing I want to do. I'd love to, I really, it's a bit, it's a bit complicated at the moment because of lockdown and I don't know how long this is going to last. Um, but in terms of say, if but lockdown wasn't happening, I definitely want to do uh, more shows, more fashion shows. Get and definitely have a gallery show. I think that's my next step once lockdown's over to have a gallery mm. show. Mm -hmm. um, I've never done one before. I've done fashion shows which have been amazing. That's really cool. But I've never done canvas and work that's not on a wall. Mm -hmm. um, doing work in the street, like nothing beats that. Like nothing beats that. But that's very temporary. Um, you know, you can do a, you can spend like seven hours on a piece on a wall, and then the next day you could be gone. But that's just the nature of the street art. It's just how it is. Um, and I've grown to get used to that. Um, but a gallery show would be really cool. And like get my, my get my clothes into stores. I think because um, I'm doing my clothes with Vida now. They're not the charity as such, but with them. So basically what they do is they get people from impoverished backgrounds. So in India and, and different countries around the world, they pay them the fair wage. They produce the clothes of very high quality. Um, and then they get taught to read and write. Um, and I get good clothes. That's um, yeah. The materials aren't damaging to the environment. Um, so it's, it's not, you know, it's not, and it's made to order as well, which is really cool. I think that's really important in fashion right now. Yes, yes, very much. Yeah. Flex of, oh yeah, I'll just produce it for no reason and put a logo on it and that'll do, or like, oh yeah, yeah, something from the 80s, you know, like, I don't know, the Goonies or something on T-shirt, and it's like, well, there's a zillion of them happening right now and, you know, you can get them for like three quid in Primark. And nothing wrong with that, if that's your thing, but I think for me, it was the kind of culture that's like now and it's not even with adults anymore it's kids they want something a bit more unique that's and they true. want something that's you know made by a designer and has thought behind it that's very limited um you know and people will came around the block for things um right now that's that true. market is crazy that's, that's yeah. my whole the market is insane right now um yeah those are mind um but yeah it's uh so that's my next step, I think, and a big big of I love it. You've got an ethical message behind that too, which is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, in terms of, of, of um, well, I say this as an artist and these things are important. These are important messages and relatable messages. And I agree with you. I think that, that if you like immortalizing your work in terms of canvas would be amazing and, and have those in, if you like, as uh, even bespoke pieces that they actually have, let alone mm. anything else you might do with prints. But the concept of that is amazing. Having you, your, um, if you like, bespoke and and uh, if you like your line, your branded line of clothing, fantastic, because you, it's what you represent. These yeah, are wonderful yeah. messages for people because they don't actually understand that they can perhaps progress in these sorts of things and they think well perhaps they have to sit in this little square box and not expand outside mm -hmm. of that i love it i think this has been a very positive um um you know interview i mean you've you shared a lot of fabulous material in terms of lots of little messages of real sort of poignance and importance in here um i mean from my point of view i thoroughly enjoyed it as a, as a fellow artist and i enjoy these anyway so that's great um 
I'm looking forward to your next projects and we're looking forward to seeing some more. Please subscribe to the Simply Inspired channel for more videos on these subjects. Thank you.